Hi, hello lovelies, editing Hannah here. Uh, just coming in real quick to say that I constantly, in this video, I am mentioning that I'm going to be getting to three episodes of this. I only get to two. I only watch Justin and Ken's episodes, uh, so I apologize for that. Uh, and also, again, I apologize for this look. Uh, it is pretty late right now and I'm editing this, so I'm sorry about it, but continue on to the video. Hi! Hello lovelies, I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to my channel, my name is Hannah and this is a place where I watch basically whatever I want. And yes, welcome back 18. I just filmed a video for them very recently uh, and I am very excited to be back once again. It is a nice Tuesday morning uh, and I am ready to do some filming. And today we're going to be doing a little bit of a special thing. Um, I feel like since I finished Wish Bus and I'm also doing the solo journey right now, um, the next video after this uh, for SP19 is probably going to be uh, Stell's Room unless something else really important comes out, which I don't feel like uh, is gonna happen, thankfully. Uh, I'm going to be getting to Stell's room, um, but for this in between, I decided we're finally going to be checking this out. Uh, not only because I feel like it's gonna be good for me, again, in my journey of understanding them, of like getting to know them a lot better. Uh, you know, it's almost my ninth month now at this point. It's like crazy to think about. Um, but I also decided to do this because it has almost been six months, or it has been more than six months. I don't even know know at this point uh, since I was on Casual Chuck's channel, which again was a crazy milestone for me. Thank you anybody who was there. If you were there at that time, it was a crazy time for me. Um, but I was... I really enjoyed obviously that experience and I thought it was like such a big thing for me obviously and we've grown a lot during that time um, and I am excited for where we are at this point in my journey um, but I decided we're going to do a little bit of revisiting. Um, I obviously watched his SB19 story videos uh, and if you want to see them I'll be sure to link them up there. Uh, I did you know all the parts. I think I watched all the parts right? <laughs> Please let me know if I missed anything. I believe I finished them all. Uh, but today we're going to be doing the What Nobody Understands About um, SP19 member. Um, those videos, we're going to be doing them uh, as a little celebration of our halfway point almost uh, in our SP19 solo journey for me. Um, like I said, we have not done Stell's EP yet. So technically I'm not halfway through. I am more like almost halfway through. I'm like 0.9% there, you know what I mean? Or not 0.9, 99% there, almost, or 90. I'm not, into, I'm not math, not math, math able, I'm not able to use math, um, but basically I'm almost there, I'm almost halfway through, and so I thought for that we're going to be getting to these members that I've done. Uh, I'm deciding to include Stell in this one because I wanted to kind of do a longer video today, uh, and also because, you know, I am literally going to get to him in like two days, I think, I'm filming in two days about his EP, um, so I decided I'm just going to do this. So we're going to be checking out the Justin, the Philippe slash Ken, I feel like I, I should just, I'm just going Ken. Uh, the Ken episode and we're going to do the Stella episode as well. So we're doing those three episodes of the What Nobody Understands About series from Casual Chuck. Uh, I'll be sure to link them down below. Watch them on your own please to give him um, the recognition and credit that he deserves um, because I feel like that's important. Um, and also he recently started out uh, his, um, you know, his live stream uh, his thing again. <laughs> he started out the new season. Uh, so check that out as well. Um, you know, supporting each other. Uh, but anyway, I'm excited for this. Sorry for the very long intro. We're just going to go ahead and get dive into this. And we're starting from Justin. I'm going to do it from uh, youngest up. Um, I hope these videos don't have much to do with each other um, because obviously they're member based, but I really don't know. So if there's something that connects the, them all, uh, then I'm really sorry about that. But I think they were not uploaded in like actual chronological order or like member order. So I hope that it's okay. But anyway, sorry for the very long intro. Let's go ahead and get into this and we're starting with Justin's episode. Uh, so yeah, let's go. All right, lovelies, let's go ahead and get into our first episode for today. I don't remember if I decided to change up the intro, but I'm going to be doing only two episodes. I'm going to be doing Justin's and Ken's, mainly because I don't have the time for today uh, and also because I thought I should wait until I am finished. Even though the episodes were released uh, before he actually came out with his album, I decided we're going to do that. So if I didn't change up the intro, I'm sorry about it, but I'll be sure the title is, says the correct thing and also all of that. Um, but anyway, though, I'm excited for this. 
this. So let's get into this. Uh, there are English subtitles on this. I don't know if they are necessary, but uh, I'm going to keep them on if there is like a correction or something. Um, but anyway, I'm excited. Let's get into this. Let's go. Da da da. Kinag sa bike queen studies ko and yung pag-aaral ko during that time. Okay, so we need those. That's good. I don't think I'm going to do it. 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 But tonight, I hope mm -hmm. to change that through his story. From being a rejected talent to becoming a world class talent. And you're yes. about to feel that it's nothing short of surreal. Hell yeah, we got the little tie in of his song. Let's go. Yeah, because this is the most recently uploaded video. I believe this is the most recently made one. So I'm excited. Ooh. Are they playing horror games? Wow. A lot of you guys have wanted me to see this, so. Bum. It was a minute past midnight on July 7, 1998, in Hello. the city, Philippines, when a baby boy was born. The wealthy De Dios family welcomed the newest member of their clan. His name is Justin. Yeah. His mommy Gemma was so surprised because he was such a big boy weighing at 9 pounds and had already oh. grown thick hair. He's the third and youngest child among his two other brothers, CJ and Yanni. Mm. Growing up as a kid, he was I described his, his brother family on as a good and obedient boy. He developed a liking towards nature and its critters. Mm. Sometimes when it floods, he would catch different bugs to pet them. He even kept two turtle pets Aww. and named them Turtle and Tortoise. Justin was also an artist. <laughs> turtle and Tortoise? That's really cute names. Aww. Yeah, let's go. Everybody who loves, like, if you love insects, you're instantly my best friend. Like, come on. Like, I know a lot of people don't for, like, different reasons, and I understand why, but dude, I love insects. I love insects. You know. <laughs> Just a kid as he made drawing his favorite hobby. Some sources even told me that he learned to draw first before learning how to write, which is why he is left-handed. When mm. Justin became a young teenager, his love for art would reach another level as he encountered the drama called Dream High. The plot of the Ooh. show revolves around performing art students chasing their dreams to become idols. This was the time when Justin said, Dream High. He started training himself and joined several school activities that would slowly reinforce his chosen path. This cool. also led him to acting and filmmaking. In mm. fact, he even ended up directing most of his school film projects. Fun. He was indeed a young boy full of dreams. Come 2016, Pinoy boy band Superstar started its hunt for Filipino mm. talents. The judges. We got to know some of this in the uh, SB19 story series, but I am happy again to do a little bit more of a deep dive because this is like an entire episode, like one of those episodes about a member, and that's really helpful, at least to me. Of the show were big names Vice Ganda, Billy Crawford, and Justin's idol herself, Dara of 21. Yeah! Justin joined the off air auditions, but he was unfortunately rejected, so he didn't make it to the live shows. Mm. Imagine if we lived in a universe where Justin actually made it. He would have been one of these guys. A group that has long since disappeared from the limelight. Mm. But this major setback didn't stop Justin from Good chasing Good thing that he dreams. didn't, I guess. He started joining different dance cover groups and even managed to appear on a TV game show as a minor contestant. Cool. And Justin's dancing stints went on until he met Josh when they became co-members of the group called Zero to Hero. Yes. While the other would be SB19 members were also busy competing in the same field. One day, Justin came across a talent workshop so he took the opportunity opportunity to join to improve his skills as a performer. Mm. The name of that talent camp was Show BT. Yes. The company's trainer Miss Honganda saw Justin's potential so they offered to train him. During SB19's humble beginnings, they didn't have a lot of supporters. Show mm. BT wasn't exactly a big company so yeah. they literally started from nothing. 
They had no salary and got minimal financial support. They had to buy their own costumes yeah. from a cheap market called Divisoria and even though Justin could afford to buy expensive clothes, he chose not to because he didn't want to alienate his brothers who weren't yeah. financially capable back then. Just yeah, I wonder what it's like and you know, I don't say that I I don't consider myself rich at all, but you know, I don't have financial struggles really, which I do, you know, I take that very very str like I I understand the privilege and the how good I have it in life. Um but I understand like I I wonder how it feels like to join a group of a lot of people who like to most of them they can't even really make a rent. But you are like, yeah, I mean, I can afford to not get paid. I would feel really guilty, honestly. And I wonder if he did as well during this time. Because I, I feel like that's a little bit, like, that's natural if you're a very empathetic person. Or if you just have empathy. I feel like that's kind of something that would happen. I am curious. Justin kept studying while training, so he struggled with pressure from both the school and the grueling South Korean style training. There were multiple yeah. times when he almost decided to quit, but he didn't until he finished his college degree in multimedia I've seen this picture so many times. College of St. Benilde, and he did it with honors. So fast forward to today, Let's go. Justin became one of the five members of SB19. A boy group that not only shaped the course of the P-pop history, but also put the Philippines on the map. Indeed. Justin became known as the main visual of the group because I don't even have to explain. Just take a look at this. <laughs> he... Okay, we're getting a little <laughs> visual compilation. I do, I do understand that, honestly, because he definitely has a more boyish look to him. You know what I mean? Like, I think he has that that um uh, like boy band look to him if that makes sense i don't know if it does but to me it does i don't even have to explain just take a look at this he is very pretty handsome i don't know <laughs> and the blonde does something to him i don't know what it is but he is very good looking he also earned the reputation of a rich kid because he just couldn't hide it Ah, okay. Mm. Hey, <laughs> 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 Rich boy. <laughs> He's like, whatever. Yeah, exactly. I'm good. I'm good to go. I don't know the conversion rate with um, these, like, this amount, like, the currency. I don't know the conversion rate, so I don't know how much that is, but I'm sure with the way they're saying it, it's much. I need to, I need to research. <laughs> Yeah, pesos. I'm sorry, I forgot the name of it real quick. I'm sorry about it. I'm, I'm just staring at what Josh's have, like what Josh is wearing. That's all I have. That's all I have going on right now in my brain. Anyway. Don't take my money from me. <laughs> Snoop Dogg! <laughs> And as people got to know his personality, he became loved for his interesting jokes which gave birth to the cornfield. Oh yeah, cuz he's very corny. That's right. When I was like on um on the live stream for Culture Clash, I didn't know why it was called a cornfield cuz I think I knew about like I think he likes corn. Like he actually does like corn as like an actual thing, but also because of the corny jokes. That's right. <laughs> which gave birth to the cornfield. Nung na experience ko na mag mentor po, parang gusto ko palitan si Coach Chito. 
<laughs> I'm gonna take over. <laughs> Dang. Like for different repertoire for for people to experience that roller coaster vibe. Or repertoire. Yeah, roller, roller Fancy. Emotions. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm happy they're providing context. So sometimes in the, like the um, in the show break videos, like they don't provide context. It's a little bit more difficult for me to understand uh, like the jokes because again, I don't really understand a lot of the the language. But it, it, it's nice that they're like providing that for me. Thank you. Uh, the cousin of me. Oh, what is his hair? I like it. It's okay, don't worry. Winnie the Pooh Eye. Winnie the Pooh Eye. Bear. Bear. Winnie is the Winnie Pig Eye. Yay! Oh, I need the long hair Beautiful back. face, wealthy background, and a sense of humor. A nice combination for sure. But little did we know that some haters are saying that without his looks and corny jokes, he's got nothing else to offer. He Dude. basically became the most underappreciated member of SB19 because they think he just existed. Dude, some of my favorite parts in SP19's discography are his parts so like I don't get it you know obviously I won't get it because I don't even have a hateful mindset towards honestly anything so I wouldn't get it but also dude and I'm sure most of you hardcore fans would agree that unfortunately most people only care about the finished product some hmm. of these people don't have any idea what happens behind the scenes and yeah that exactly it's where Justin shines the brightest you see, Justin has this unique ability that makes the people around him better. He's one of the most unselfish artists I have ever seen in the industry. He is someone who is willing to do Ooh. the dirty work, and that sets up his group for success. Now I might get hate for saying this, but in my opinion, I consider Justin as the second leader of SB19. Mm. If Pablo leads through his assertiveness, that Justin makes sense. does it with calmness. If yeah. you pay close attention to their journey, you would realize that Justin has never had a moment where he yelled or had a meltdown. He is so calm that it gets scary sometimes. Why mm. scary? Because of the things he's capable of. We all know that when SB19 drops or performs something, it always feels like a storm. And yeah. Justin <laughs> is the calm before that. SB19 produces world-class output because of Justin's creative mind. He has this borderline obsessive attention to detail that enables mm. him to come up with fascinating concepts that resonate with people all yes. over the world. He is not a spoon feeder. Yes, I love his mind. From what I've seen, again, I've only watched uh, with Surreal and then I watched uh, Kai Began. I feel like every single time I try to remember what the title is, I mess it up. I don't know if I did, but with both of those, I love the concepts. And again, if you guys watch that, I got so pumped when I realized that they were connected. I was like, oh, this is crazy. Um, but I think that's something that's a really good quality to have is that sort of, um, again, that calm, calm assertiveness and also that ability to come up with these really creative concepts um, that stick with people. You know, that's a real talent and like something that I think a lot of people who have that talent really do not like notice is a talent because again, like stuff with like writing, for example, stuff like that, we're just expected to do it well. You know, and so whenever somebody is really good at it, it's kind of just like, whatever. But it's genuinely really impressive, you know? He doesn't hold our hand. He respects his viewers' intelligence by utilizing his environmental storytelling, which empowers us to figure out the That's story right, ourselves. Yeah. And Ooh. when we do, <laughs> we get satisfying. Simply put, he's not just the group's main visual, but also the one who mainly visualizes the cutting-edge ideas that allowed SB19 to consistently perform at the highest level. Mm. That's a really good way to put that. Mm. 
Ah, so cool. Sobrang bilib na bilib ako. Kasi lahat ng aspeto talaga parang hindi ko maiisip yun. Ah. Tapos may mga nakalutang na papel sa kalibit mo. Ikaw lang yung gumagalaw ng mabilis. Yung papel nakastop. Ah, okay. ah, parang oh, parang oh, tapos yung mga papel yung map papel mapa mm. map, yo, yo, and then going on the screen yeah that's so cool ah Justin is really doing it picture yeah so kasi talagang very hands on siya okay ganito yung scenario kasi di natin maiwasan yun eh mm. di ba sa production naman minsan talaga may mga hindi maiwasan may plan A may plan B may plan C may plan D that's the normal mm. so ngayon yan yun 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 Uh, which is samurang edad niya. Ilan pa lang yan? 20? Like 20 at this time, diba? right? Pero grabe yung, di ba, pagka hands-on niya. Parang siya ngayon, nag- isa din sa mga nag-delete din, no? Mm. Galing, galing. Nakaka-proud si Justin. Next naman, yeah. show tayo ng walang rollerblade. Sila, mag-ano lang, mag-tricks-tricks lang po kayo. Ikot-ikot sa amin. Pwede rin naka-steady siya. Mm. One of the member, Justin, was the one I mostly talked to during the initial meeting and after the final production. The original storyboard was created by Justin, one of the members of SB9. Mm. And when he gave it to me, it was already animated. Oh! He's asking Pablo about the message, like the image he imagined when writing the song. Mm -hmm. what, what do you want to convey so that Because he can conceptualize the and yeah. create something out of it? So, yeah. mm. See what I mean? Yeah. Sheesh, right? <laughs> and not only that, but I also... Sheesh, right? Yeah. I... I think a lot of it stems from that early school stuff. You know what I mean? Because I think with some people, especially like older generations, they don't see the good that comes out of just doing fun, t like stuff that is considered fun um, when you're younger. But then when you're growing older, it actually becomes like, a good thing to have in a work environment for example like directing for just like school short films for some people that's like you know that's whatever but then you can from that work on top of it and become you know even a movie director out of that because you kind of get the idea in a smaller scale you can work on it without like if you fail at a school film that's not really a big deal but you kind of gotten an idea of how it works in a smaller scale and then you can build on top of that and I think that helps a lot which is why I encourage a lot of people especially younger people to work in the arts if that's something that they think they will be interested in in the future because being exposed to that creativity younger at a younger age can help you build on top of that when you grow older so that's why I've always been in theater groups for a while now because even though it doesn't seem like a lot now i think it'll be really helpful in the future you know anyway that's all i have to say also say that, that justin is one of the most underrated dancers out there and i mm. just let the footage speak for itself that's true too oh my goodness what this song what have i seen there's oh I've seen a dance performance with this song as well, but it was not them, I think. <laughs> And when it comes to vocals, you better not underestimate him. I'm ready. But would you believe me if I said that those amazing qualities I have mentioned are not the reason why I support him? Probably not, right? Mm. But I'm not joking. This is the reason behind my support for Justin. I'm intrigued. Oh. Always try to find the beauty or the good side. I have one advice from uh, for you guys. Um, I hope when you grow up, you always look to the good side. Okay? Always try to appreciate um, every good thing that is happening in this world. All right? Aww. You want to say something to your parents? I love my parents. That's really sweet. 
rin mag-thank you kay Ken kasi ano, na-experience ko maging kuya. Feeling, <laughs> 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 parang minsan kasi feeling ko parang, ano, kuya ko ni Ken, gano'n. So kahit hindi, parang minsan, ano, nafe-feel ko gano'n. Yeah, is he, he, they said he's the youngest of his family. I, I'm not entirely sure if there's, he has more siblings that are younger, but I think they said that um, he has two older brothers. That's really cute. Because I always was the oldest, and I feel like that also translates to how I treat other people. That's really sweet. Goodness. Make sure you're tied up. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Ooh. Hi, Mama. Kitty! Oh, I miss animals. Ah. Doing a little plantation here. So what have we learned from Justin's story? For me, it's his desire to dream and his willingness to take every opportunity. Mm. He woke up every day believing that that day was the day. When he found out about the talent search, he auditioned. Ugh. He didn't make it, but he never gave up and kept going. He even continued his studies while training. And because of that, he turned the so-called unfortunate rejection into the most fortunate revelation. All the windows that closed at him before are now starting to open up. He made me realize that every day, there's something surreal out there that is just waiting to be found. Mm. But only those who dream will find it. And only those who believe will see it. So start dreaming no matter how surreal it gets. Who knows? It might just happen. That was a really fun video. I think that was everything. It's just the credits now. Yeah, of course, credit to all these people that were involved in making this. That was really nice. Again, I knew a bit of this because I watched the whole story series. Uh, so it was mostly just like the beginnings and all that. Um, but I thought this was really nice just like to get a look in because I feel like from show break and a lot of other content that I've watched, I feel like I've gotten this in some ways. Um, but also I feel like it's nice to like get it cemented a little bit, you know what I mean? Because I, honestly, since the beginning, the thing that got me into Justin, to say, um, if I can say it that way, I don't know. Um, but some of the things that got me in there was the singing, the looks, of course, um, but not entirely, like that wasn't that important, important uh, but also his smile. I love him his smile. He has that gummy smile that I also have and that I think I've always been a little bit, you know, I've always been a little bit uh, insecure over um, because, again, I feel like you can see my entire teeth every single time I smile um, and, you know, it's not the greatest according to me, but he has that and I love his smile. So it's kind of gotten me to be a little bit softer towards it in a way, you know? Um, but anyway, that was really lovely, a really fun episode. Uh, and again, of course, please check these out uh, if you have the time. Uh, and you, if you have time to watch this video, then you absolutely have time to watch this episode. Um, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and get into Ken's next. I think this was the, the first one that was released, um, but I'm not entirely sure again. I don't know how they were exactly released. Um, but I'm excited to get into it as well. And sorry again if I forgot to mention that I would be keeping, I'll be keeping Stells until after I'm finished with his solo music. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and get into our next video, <laughs> our next episode. Let's go into Ken's. Let's go. All right, lovely. So let's go ahead and get into our next episode. This is What Nobody Understands About Ken of SB19. Uh, so yeah, let's get into this as well because I have a little less time than I thought I would. I need to be out of the house in like maybe 30 minutes. Uh, I'm going to be a little bit more quicker about this. I hope you understand that. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. Let's go ahead and get into this as well. Let's go. Disclaimer, of course. Hello. Uh, not this song. I can't handle it. <laughs> Mm. 
please stop it. Oh, okay, we're gonna get dramatic. I mean, we kind of were already, but still. Ken is, in my opinion, the most successful idol in P-pop history. Most fans see him as someone who's living the life most of us can only dream of. But in mm. reality, there's a lot more going on behind all the glitz and glamour. So in today's video, we will reveal the challenges he had to go through just to get where he is today. From being a scrawny kid who only ate instant noodles on his birthdays to becoming the CEO of his own company. I yes. know, Ken's story is like a definition of rags to riches. And the haters are not having it. Mm. He quickly became one of the most polarizing figures in the P-pop industry. But before we talk about all that, let's talk about his humble beginnings because he's straight up inspiring. Indeed. I'm very ready for it. Oh, this freaking part. I, what is honestly really underrated, but so freaking good. Okay. Um, I was going to say something, but I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah, man, I forgot what I was going to say. We're just going to continue. <laughs> Maybe I'll come up with it later. Oh yeah. Now I remember, uh, we got to see some of that, like that uh, part with his like parents. We got to see that in the story episodes as well. Again, link up there if you want to see it. <sighs> it started in Pagadian, Zamwanga del Sur. This is the countryside where Philip John Suson was raised. Mm. His mom wanted to name him Kenji, but his grandpa Felipe insisted to name him Philip. He was the youngest member of a family that barely had anything financially. They were very poor that instead of a cake on his birthday, all he gets is a plate of instant noodles. <laughs> Life was so hard that having fried chicken was heaven for him. So it quickly became his all-time favorite. <laughs> because of this, Same. both of his parents had to go overseas to find better paying jobs to support <laughs> the education of Ken and his older sister. I remember that too. He had to be taken under the care of his grandparents. Yeah. He then grew up in a church and his grandpa was the pastor. He was just a scrawny kid who likes mathematics and discovered drawing as his first talent. So he went on to become an editorial cartoonist in school. I remember that too. Family gatherings in the Philippines always require a karaoke machine. And Kent's extended family wasn't a stranger to that. Mm. He used to hide during these occasions because he was always asked to sing. I was told by some sources that Ken had a very good singing voice as a kid but lost his confidence when puberty hit because it gave him an ultra deep voice which turned out to become one of his greatest assets in the yeah. future because of the dude named Pablo. I've never of course. Na, I've never thought that there are people who really appreciate my voice. Because I'm not that confident in my voice because my range is too low and my voice is too low. Now, I appreciate my voice because there are people who appreciate my voice. That's very sweet. Anyway, his newfound love for music. Yeah, I'm happy that like that was the case for him because yeah, I do know a lot of people who get bullied for their voice, um, and I frankly don't understand it because I think for me, and I know that my brain works very differently than a lot of other people, but for me, I think voice has never been something that has bothered me in anybody. You know what I mean? I just think that it's so cool when I meet somebody who has a very different voice, and I'm sure if I ever got to speak to any of them, but especially Ken, because again of his crazy voice tone i would just be like this is crazy and i love it you know what i mean ah. music got him to learn his first musical instrument without anyone teaching him guitar so he ended yeah. up becoming a softball guitarist but later fixed it as he learned more mm. He was also active in sports representing his school in regional tournaments. He played some table tennis and set cool. the crowd as a spiker. For mm. those who don't know, this position requires exceptional skills to perform explosive jumps to Jeez, block Jeez, wow. The teacher saw this as a potential that can translate into good dancing. So mm. he was offered to join the dance club for better grades. Cool. He was hesitant at first, but when he tried, you all know what happened next. Watching he started flipping clips, around. He like he was born to dance. He was even hired by his school to choreograph some dance routines. He then Whoa. moved to Cagayan de Oro to study architecture in college. Mm. He became a member of the dance crews called Excite, GA7, 
and Amigo 7. Yeah, I remember that one. The crews were so good. In fact, Ken had a crewmate named Joshua who went on to become a member of a successful international idol group in the future called Z Boys. Mm. They were beating everybody in the cool. countryside, so there was no point in competing there anymore. It was time for the big leagues. Yeah, into they the city. To join major K-pop dance competitions, and this was the first time when Ken met other SB19 would-be members. Hello. Ooh. Not as brothers, but as enemies. Mm. In one particular contest, True that. Josh and Stell's crew defeated Ken's because they already had a gold status in the industry at the time. Mm. Ken accepted defeat gracefully and even asked to be trained by Josh, which actually surprised Yeah, oh, that's really sweet. I, I think about that a lot, being like, this, it's crazy to have that history with them and then be like, yeah, now we are superstars like the biggest of our kind you know what i mean we kind of invented the genre in a way like obviously there was groups before them but also they just skyrocketed it you know Ken accepted defeat gracefully and even asked to be trained by Josh, which actually surprised him because he thought Ken was a show off. Idol Josh. But because of their distance, the training together never. Yeah, right. Ken then Different went islands to even. continue his studies. Fast forward to 2017, he received a message from Josh. It was an invite to audition for the fifth member spot of SB19. Yeah. But there's one problem. Ken had no money, so Josh was like, no problem, I'll take care of it. I'll Ken send you the money. Ken grandma about stopping school to pursue it, and she was very hesitant because she thought it was a scam, and his mm. parents overseas would have automatically said no. But Ken was so close to his grandma that he managed to convince her to go in secret. Wow. So a country boy took off to pursue his dreams. That's crazy. He had nothing with him except his phone, his clothes, and a 1,500 peso pocket money. Ooh. This time when he arrived at the airport, there was no crew. It was all him. Nothing. So imagine how that must have felt. Anyway, yeah. he took a taxi to SBT talent camp and of course, the drivers camped him. He had to pay 600 pesos for a supposedly 150 peso trip. <sighs> what a ripoff. Anyway, I know. He finally met Josh and the boys and started training with them for a year while crashing into a distant relative's house to rest up. Mm. He slept on the floor, not with a comforter, but a bunny. Ooh. Because if he didn't, he would be homeless. Ken had no salary when he was still training, so he moonlighted as a small time model to survive. Mm. Which is an experience that would play a big role in his future. The, dude the clothing, was yeah. fighting for his dreams every single day. So here comes 2018, Woo! where they finally debuted, and though it was a rocky start, they gradually progressed to become the greatest P-pop group God has ever created. See, If you want to know more Indeed. about their story as a group, check out the SB19 story series I made. Yes. Link down in the description. Do it. You can also Do it, and also, obviously, you can watch when I reacted to it, if you want to as well. <laughs> to join the highest tier of our channel's membership, if you're interested to be credited as one of the executive producers. Mm. So how did Ken become the most polarizing P-pop idol? Like how he is just existed. He obsessively <laughs> loved by fans or obsessively hated by bashers? Mm. Well, he has this persona of a badass dude who doesn't give a shit. And if you combine that with one of the many accusations thrown at him, then they got themselves a new P-pop villain in the making. Yeah, but true. there's something in common between all those issues. They lack evidence. Mm. There are a few exceptions though. No evidence. But you can't say no a person proof. is arrogant just because he looks cool and badass. The dude is even a softie. He tends to yeah. cry in interviews and emotional moments. He's like one of the like the members I've seen cry the most. Like it's 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 kind of crazy to me that like a lot of people who look the most stern are the people who are the most soft. Like that usually is the case in real life. Like a lot of people that I've met are like who I think are the softest are always tall and strong a lot of the time. And I feel like that is, I think it's like a protective thing, in my opinion. When people are like that, it's like a protection of themselves being like, I need to look strong so that I don't get hurt easily. You know, I think that's something they that can think about maybe. His awkwardness as a kid is still there, and this TikTok clip says it all. Me, mm -hmm. you, and you, and me, just 
us and your friend Steve. Do 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 Steve. Do 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 Steve. Do 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 Steve. Do 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 Steve. That's me. Do 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 Steve. Do 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 Steve. Do 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 Steve. <laughs> the tab. Also, you can't just call a person lazy just because you've seen a few clips of him sleeping. I yeah, mean, that too. Isn't it a result of him working too hard? Being an idol and running your own clothing company at the same time is no joke. Yeah. The dude only used to draw this aspiration, but now he made it happen. He managed to build a company that sold out merch in just yeah. minutes. It's insane. It's even rumored that his company is now worth more than a million. Ooh. Whether it's true or not, it put an even bigger target on his back. Mm. And haters started coming up with even more ridiculous claims. Like accusing him of copying two K-pop music videos just because they have a similar vibe. This was easily debunked though. If you oh, want to check yeah. it out, I made a video about it. Link down in the description. I mean, I think it's very prevalent in K-pop and I don't know what it is. I think it's a lot of the very strong like belonging you have to your fan base but a lot of people yes do accuse others of copying when it's just kind of similar aesthetics which like nobody invented well some people i'm sure but that was like thousands of years ago but nobody invented like having dragons in your music video or wearing chain mail in a music video or doing uh, these things you know like nothing unless it's like if it was like side by side same shot same outfits i wouldn't call anything really copying honestly you know anyway and i say some as that i say that as somebody who also likes exo like i like the group and i like the artist that people were saying that he copied you know so i'm not saying this in a way of like defending them i'm also like saying I don't think it really has any merit at all, you know? His main dancer position got also heavily criticized because of one single clip of him messing up on live TV. It mm. wasn't fair in my opinion because Ken has always been consistent in his dance performances, yet yeah. the later suddenly forgot about how good he really is. Yeah, he's some he's Ken one of the best, honestly, back. so. Or did he? So why does the poultry still exist and are still growing in numbers after all the bashing? Well, it's because he doesn't only have the alluring personality, but he also has the capability to back it of up. Of course, of course. Press out. Capabilities. What's crazy about Ken is that he has already shown us enough talent, like his exceptional dancing. Ah, oh, I love that is this one. To fulfill a main vocal role. <laughs> Harmonies. Yet he still has yeah, I love the way I love the way that he vocalizes a lot actually. He's really good at it. I'm telling you man, this guy is a living anime character. Yes. Yes. I don't know who he looks like exactly, but he does. A dancer who is known for his aerial flips but never tells us that he can also break that. A singer who writes and co-produces his own songs. Mm. A musician that plays guitar, keyboard, drums, and can even beatbox. Yeah. A, influencer. a man who plays sports like back. Bulan and Paleo. Those music videos, man, I'm uh, I'm so obsessed with them. I mean, I like all of his music videos, but those two especially. Basketball, billiards, volleyball, badminton, table tennis, boxing, and sepak takraw with decent proficiency. Oh, so cool. A skater boy, an artist, a philanthropist, and most especially, a man of faith. Mm. I initially right. thought that the Superior Sound brand was all about him, but I was quickly proven wrong when I found this Bible verse underneath his Bulan CD. Mm. Hebrews 1, 5-14. 
The entire passage is lengthy, but it all boils down to Christ being the superior of all beings. I mean, all of us have different religions, some don't even have one. But I just respect people like him who stand firm behind their beliefs. As of today, Ken has established himself as an arguably the most successful P-pop idol and the richest among his co-members. And it's just the beginning. They're still on their way to introducing Filipino music to the yeah. world, to the US as of the making of- This was made in 2022, and they've been doing a lot in the US since then, which is so awesome. Of this video. And all over the world, you know? His group, SB19, is the first one to ever do it. So what have we learned about Ken's story? For me, it was his persistence and willingness to take risks. Have you ever noticed that sometimes it's your loved ones that said no to your aspirations? Because, you know, they care about you. They don't want you to fail and all that. Do you know how many people have had visions, ideas, and huge career moves that they were about to do, but they allowed the word no to stop them? Mm. For all I know, you might be one of those people. The difference with Ken is that he never gave the power to the word no. It was his own grandma who tried to stop him. Yeah. But he continued. Yes, haters exist, but he didn't reject his own ideas just because they rejected his ideas. Haters hate because they feel small when your ideas start turning into reality. He once said in an interview that success is the best revenge, so he stopped killing them with kindness. Mm. To this day, Ken has been torturing them with success. Exactly. All right. Ugh. That was really good too. I mean, obviously, I really enjoyed Casual Truck's work so far. So it's like, yeah, you know, I enjoy them all the time. Um, but that's entirely true. And I feel like in the original SP19 story series where I watched that, I feel like I also mentioned that in that being successful is the best revenge. It's true. It's like people who try to push you down will be happy if you decide to stay down. But if you decide to do something better, or if you decide to really go out there and show yourself off, then that's when people get mad. And that's when people feel the most wronged because they tried to put you down, but you they they, they didn't they didn't affect you, you know? Uh, and that's really awesome. Um, but yeah. <sighs> that was really cool too. I enjoy that a lot. I feel like how should I put this? He's just so cool. I don't know what else to say, really. I also have, uh, I need to get out of the, the house, like, right now. Um, but I really enjoy this, and I thought it was really fun. And I respect him a lot, obviously. I already did, already did before this. Um, oh, yeah, I was about to say that. That he recently, obviously, with the more release of his, like, solo music, um, because, obviously, Mike Test, um, or not Mike Test, yeah, Mike Test, but also, I meant the... Uh, the album uh, Complex, Complex it is, Complex and Seven Sins being released after this, um, he has just been even more aggressive about it, which I, I do love, obviously, because at this point, he has grown even more than what he was right here, which was almost two years ago now, which is crazy. But anyway, like I said, I need to get out of the house like right now, because I have a class about, what did I have a class about? I have a political... Uh, political science class. That's very interesting. Um, but I'm gonna leave right now, basically. But I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did, and I will see you in the outro where I will finish this video off. Uh, so yeah, let's go. All right, lovelies, that was all I had for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and thank you for enjoying with me. Uh, so yeah, I will be getting to Stells, Paolo's, and Josh uh, when I have finished all of their music, which is, again, gonna be probably next year because of how long it's probably going to take. Um, because, of, like, these, these guys still has a lot less, of course, but with Paolo and Josh, they have a lot of Zola music. Uh, so it's gonna take a little bit to get through, but I hope you guys are along for the ride uh, and are gonna have fun with me, of course, while we go through this um but thank you so much for watching this again if i didn't update the intro i will be doing it as soon as i get home from this class uh hopefully if i remember to um i hope you understand though that again i didn't have enough time to get to three of them um right now because i need to leave the house like almost now uh but like i said i hope you guys enjoyed this i hope you had fun with it and again thank you to casual chuck for obviously letting me be on culture clash even though that was a while ago um but also being really really nice and really supportive in 
this journey. Um, but anyway, thank you all for watching. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, so yeah, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to this channel or going over to my Patreon. You can also like this video and if you have anything to request, you can leave it down in the comments below and hopefully I'll get to it one day. Uh, so yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Uh, so yeah, bye-bye.